Hey guys, welcome to episode five of the Daily Diesel Show, uh, ran by the 1023 Soul Shop Talk podcast, aka uh, Dusty. <laughs> um, today I'm just going to do q and It's just going to be questions that came in over the weekend. Uh, I think these are all questions from the weekend. Um, not necessarily from like viewers, but just questions that came into our general um, uh, Q&A inbox. And uh I, I think that it's a lot easier to answer questions when they're posed by someone else than it is if I'm trying to like pose a hypothetical question and then answer it. So uh, we're just going to dive into answering these questions. A uh, couple things I want to say. I know we got to get the crap out of the way in the beginning. Um, this is not sponsored by anyone, for one. Um, I've said many times I don't want it to be. And it may be someday, but I don't think I want it to be. Um, we don't like, it's a pretty small community we're talking to here. Um, the thing that's important though, and the reason that I keep doing this, um, is that I'm trying to reach the most amount of people with good information. And that's a hard balance. You're trying to decide like, well, like I'm, I'm a very real person. I'm not interested in like things that are fake. And so it's kind of difficult sometimes to decide, you know, where, you know, where do you draw the line at like like clickbait and um, weird titles to to get in front of people that it matters to versus being just completely authentic? And we've mostly stuck to the idea of like, oh, I'm just going to be completely authentic and, uh, and that's it. But um, all that to say, if you appreciate this, if this is helpful to you, um, it, if you find an opportunity to share the podcast with somebody, uh, I, I would appreciate if you did. And if you don't think it's useful, then don't. It, it's totally that simple. Um, but I think that uh, the journey of trying to figure out how to um, communicate for me, uh, along with the, the amount of knowledge that we're gaining being on this side of things, um, could be useful to a lot of people. So if you, if you find that this is useful, um, make sure to share it, whether it be a podcast, the YouTube videos, all these daily shows, unless otherwise, unless I say otherwise, um, they are, they are a video also, uh, if that helps, they're on YouTube along with, I think now all of our podcasts are on YouTube. We spent like a, a couple weeks spree of just posting, uh, like every Monday, I think we posted all the old episodes before we were posting there. Um, some of them aren't videos. They're just, you know, audio that's uploaded, um, with like a picture or whatever, but, uh, shout out to Megan for that. Megan is our uh, full-time marketing lady and, uh, editing. She does a great job. So I'll put my glasses on here and, uh, we'll jump into the questions. All right. So the first question is this one, this one actually was from YouTube it says, uh, uh, does anybody have experience with running 160 injectors in an OBS without an intercooler? Looking to see what kind of EGTs I would get. Um, my answer to that is your EGTs are going to be dependent on um, like what is your fuel pressure? What is your uh, uh, HPOP pressure? What is your ICP, your injection control pressure? Uh, it's going to be dependent on your, your, your turbo, um, whether you have leaks or not like how hot of a tune you decide to run it in. So like, like how much pulse width and injection pressure are you running? There's really no good way to answer that. Like, like if you put a 160 zero injector in your truck on a bone stock OBS, assuming it has no leaks, which is probably a bad assumption, it's going to run too hot if you put it in race tune. Um, it also won't maintain fuel pressure ICP. It, it, so it's, it's really a question you can't answer. Like you're, you're looking at the wrong question. Can you run 160 zero injectors in your OBS? Yes, it will run just like stock which is the best answer I can give. Um, and then it will be capable if you have supporting mods of running, you know, up to, you know, 380 ish horsepower, if you want that. Uh, but that does require a, you know, fuel system, high pressure oil pump, intercooler, turbo, possibly transmission mods, tuning and so forth. Uh, but just sticking 160 zeros in an OBS, as long as it's not a Cali model, it'll run just like stock. I hope that's a useful answer for somebody. Um, this was actually, this was one more from YouTube. Uh, it says, uh, thanks for the podcast. I look forward to them. Is there a parameter parameter list of normal operating ranges for a seven, three diesel? Uh, and I think that's, that's a good question because like we, like, like right now we deal with people, 
um, on an individual basis. And so like if you bought tuning from us or something like that, uh, we will, if there's an issue, if the truck doesn't run the way you assumed it would, or if there's a problem, then we'll look at a data log and we'll try to determine, you know, what the issue could be. And it's not that simple. Um, like there isn't just like a list of things we can look at. Uh, we, we, we deal with, with shops frequently who don't know, uh, what to look for. Like, you know, one example would be we had a, we had a, a couple weeks ago, we had a shop we were working with that, um, had a customer who had a runability problem with his truck. Actually had lots of problems. He had like very low power. As he explained, he had, um, like a lot of smoke, like the idle was really rough. There was a lot of issues with the truck and, uh, he dealt with it for a long time trying to figure it out on his own. Uh, and he ended up taking to a repair shop that said, well, the injectors are bad. We did a contribution test, you know, passes a buzz test. All the injectors buzz. They sound good. Um, but it failed to contribution test. And so we know that it's the injectors. And the answer that I have to that is no, a contribution, like a seven, three will basically always fail a contribution test. There will be at least one cylinder on every single time you run a contribution test that will fail at least one, maybe two or three. And, uh, and you could change the CPS, you could change the injectors, you could change the harnesses, like all it's like what cylinders are throwing a code, uh, or say they're not contributing correctly it might change, but the, but it will always fail a contribution test. And that is not indicative of an injector problem. Now, interestingly, like this customer, and I told him this ahead of time, I told the shop and I told the customer this, um, that it's like you could have an injector problem based on the issues he described. Um, but a contribution test does not confirm that it does not mean anything by itself. Uh, and so that's what I think is important. And so it's really hard like to say like that there is a parameter list that we're looking for. We can give a general concept. Like, um, for example, like, like it's really important and highly overlooked that your, your, uh, truck needs to be able to make, uh, to maintain the injection pressure that's desired. And uh, the easiest way to test that is to go wide open throttle in whatever tune you want to run. Like if it's, if it, if it does have modified tuning on it and like it probably will, uh, it probably will be commanding, you know, somewhere near 3000 PSI of injection pressure. If the truck isn't able to maintain that pressure, then you've got a problem and uh, the further it gets away from 3000 PSI at wide open throttle uh, sustained, the worse, the worse it is. So that, you know, that's like one like tiny piece that we can point people to, but that doesn't really give you a full scope. And so uh, it would be an individual basis. We'd be able to say like, here's a normal operating range. Cause it's not something we can answer just um, on a broad scale like that. All right. This was a question about, um, it comes from Ross it says, uh, I was wondering if a SMB cold air intake is compatible with the T4 kit and an S467.7 FMW. So S468 is, as most of you would know, um, for my 1995 7.3 power stroke, uh, the SMB cold air intake is compatible in that you would have to build an intake tube that would go from the uh, the outlet of the cold air intake, like where it would, right over your valve cover, you're going to have your uh, your divider or the coupler that would connect your intake tube um, from the intake itself all to the turbo. Uh, the SMB intake will run to that intake tube. The T4 kit does not retain any of that. So you could build a tube that runs to your SMB filter box or from the uh, intake tube on your filter box to the turbo. You could build that and it certainly would be compatible. It would work fine. Um, but like they, they would flow enough. I would assume, um, I haven't done that at least without pulling like the lid off of them. Uh, but you would have, to, so it's not compatible and you can't just bolt it on. It is compatible in that you could build an intake tube and it would work. Put it that way. All right. This is a long question. Uh, I will try to summarize as I read, um, but I'm dyslexic. So we'll see what happens here. Uh, this one's from Dylan. I'm looking to build, sorry, I'm looking at buying the PHP Hydra uh, plus custom tuning for my 2002 7.3. My Edge Evolution toe tune isn't really cutting it. 
I have a hard time getting between third and overdrive under load. That's important. Um, if I purchase this package, how much does it cost to have you do some changes over the 30 day mark? I'd like to upgrade to a GTP 38 R and change from 33s to 35s later down the road. I also heard that your tunes are a higher idle. Is that true? Uh, I, I would rather stay with stock idle RPM, 650 to 700 RPM ish. Is there anything else I should know about your tunes? I'm not really looking to take it, make it into a race car. I just, I want to tow easily up the mountains with better shift points, lower EGTs and trans transmission temperatures and the ability to drive up a pass doing more than 50 miles per hour. All right. Sorry. That was hard to get through. All right, so here's the answer. Uh, you just asked a lot of questions <laughs> that make me want to ask more questions. So if you have a stock truck, I do not recommend buying custom tuning. That's number one. Uh, PHP's you know, power hunting performance that makes the, um, the PHP Hydra. Uh, their library tunes are fine for stock trucks. There's no reason to pay for anything other than that. Unless you find that you have a specific issue, we could maybe work through and talk about like, okay, we'll custom tuning um, and that buying tuning from someone else who can modify it will help you. Uh, I, I would not bother buying custom tuning. So that negates the second question, which was um, what does it cost to have changes past 30 day mark? Thirdly, if you're saying that you tow, like, and it sounds like this is the scenario you're looking at, you have, you have issues um, getting from third to overdrive because of speed. I'm assuming that's what you mean. Um, is that uh, like you cannot get fast enough that you can get an overdrive, um, meaning you don't have enough power to pull grades, and so you're towing heavy. Um, I'm just inferring this. I don't know for sure. Um, I definitely would not go from 33-inch tires to 35-inch tires because the larger tires you put on the truck, um, the more leverage you're putting against the engine that's going to make it harder to apply power to the ground. And gears will not compensate for that, especially when you consider mass. So I should say you have to consider mass. It will not, gears will not compensate for mass. So uh, definitely don't put larger tires on it. Um, definitely don't pay for custom tuning. If you're looking at getting a 30R, GTP 30R, I recommend not doing that. I would recommend buying a turbo like we've talked about in the last episode, I think, or a couple of them. Uh, a couple in the, uh, in the past is choosing a turbo that's going to work well um, for the power you want to make and choosing that, the power you want to make within an RPM range that makes sense and what's efficient for the engine. Uh, 30R is a very expensive turbo that uh, really there, there's so many better options and I don't have enough time to go into the detail on this, but um, seriously, Dylan, probably just call us and we can talk about it. But uh, And I hate to do that on a show where I'm explaining the answers, but it's too complicated for that. Um, it sounds like what you're looking for is probably not what you're actually looking for, and it's going to take a little bit more digging to get into this. Um, but yeah, the takeaways are you don't need, you shouldn't probably buy custom tuning if you have a stock injector truck. Uh, don't put larger tires on your truck if you're looking to tow with it and you want it to tow well, and you're already struggling with power issues. Uh, we sort of covered that in the last show too. Um, also, the last the last question I want to address here is uh, you've heard that our tunes idle higher. They don't idle higher. Like we, uh, if you have a stock injector truck, especially like idle parameters are completely stock. We don't touch them. Nothing. It's 100% from the factory. Same. We don't touch them. Uh, that's all I can answer on that one. All right. This one's from uh, Justin. I have a stock 1997 F350 and I am upgrading to the iRate diesel e-fuel kit. I watched your podcast on the towing setup. This was from like two week ago, Friday. Uh, I watched your podcast on the towing setup and that's what I'm following. My question is, if I do the fuel system and stage one turbo at the same time, will I need new tunes? I'm not doing the injectors yet. So if he sticks a KC stage one turbo on his OBS truck with an electric fuel system, does he need to modify the tuning from what he already has? I don't even need to know what he has to say, no, he doesn't. Um, all of those are supporting modifications, basically anything other than injectors um, and a massive tire size or gear ratio change is not going to affect the truck in any way that tuning will compensate for it. For like 99% of people, like very rarely will changing anything else, like n like change the way we would tune the truck. 
it may benefit the truck. Like if you had, if you had larger injectors and you stuck, um, you know, a modified turbo on it, like something that matches the injectors and so forth. And you planned out that, you know, what your RPM range and your power it's going to make in that RPM range is going to be. I know I give too many caveats here, but, um, like a turbo or a high pressure oil pump that, that now keeps up that the old one didn't will make the truck run differently, but we don't have to change tuning for that. Uh, that, that part doesn't matter. Uh, so Justin, the simple answer is, uh, you don't need to change tuning, change tuning. When you get the injectors, everything else, it'll run great. Well, we can't promise it'll run great, but it won't be because of tuning. I put it that way. <laughs> All right. Uh, this one's from, uh, Regan. Uh, I'm newly, I'm newly a seven, three power stroke owner. And I've read a lot of good things about your company. I'm looking at buying a hydro tuner, but I had some questions before buying. I have a 2002 seven, three with a ZF six manual transmission. Everything is stock. I'm wondering if custom tunes are needed or recommended for a stock truck. I would like to upgrade injectors and turbo down the road, but not for a while. Truck has 84 K on it. Nice find by the way. Any advice is appreciated. All right, man. Simple answer. Uh, no, you don't need custom tuning. Start with the PHP Hydra. Um, use their library tunes. Don't pay for custom tuning. That'll be a great start. That was an easy one to get through. All right, this one's from Dave. Um, by the way, I'll throw this out there real quick. Uh, if if you're listening or watching this, if you if you post a question, I don't. I won't obviously always answer them. This is just from like the weekend. A few questions that came in, and I just grabbed a couple of them. Uh, if you like this format of answering specific questions and this is useful to you, uh, genuinely, I would love to know. Like, I'm not, I don't want to take this podcast in a direction that's not helpful. That's the whole point of it is to be useful. And uh, if it steers away from that, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to gear what I say towards making people happy, but I will gear, t- you know, what I cover because um, there's a lot to cover towards what's actually helpful. So, if you find this helpful, uh, a resounding hell yes, let's cover Q&A frequently. I will absolutely do it because we get crap loads of these questions all the time. Uh, just generally, I don't talk about them. So um, so send us an email, media at 1020s.com. Leave us a comment on YouTube. Leave us a comment on Apple Podcasts, on Facebook, whatever. You know, you see the thing posted. Uh, and let us know because I, I really would like to know. Okay, uh, from Dave. I'm in the process of rebuilding a 1997 F350 um, 7.3 for an RV puller. I'm getting a complete engine overhaul with uh, coated pistons, a Colt Cam Stage 2, uh, a diesel side adrenaline high pressure oil pump, uh, an intercooler kit, an Allison six speed transmission. I would like to be around the 500 horsepower area. I would like to utilize, utilize a Super Duty turbo base and turbo setup. For that, I have. AA code injectors. Uh, I was debating between 20530s and 23830s. I think you meant 23880s. Uh, and maybe you can shed some light on what setup I can work towards for my use. Wow, you just said a lot of things. All right, so you've got an OBS you're looking to tow with. You're putting an Allison in it, a fully built trans. Um, you want to make around 500 horsepower and you want to use a super duty style turbo and you don't know what injectors to get. All right. <laughs> I should have put this question in here. I can't answer this question. We're like two minutes away from being out of time. Uh, Dave, I'm going to call you, man. I, I try to send, if I, if I cover these questions in these podcasts, I try to send them like a link to the video or the podcast later so they know that I answered it. Because typically I don't go take the time to answer these unless I say, just call us. Uh, in this case, I'm going to say just call us because there's too many problems with that. Let me point out a couple. One, if you're looking to tow with it and you're doing this whole build, don't build 500 horsepower. And here's one huge glaring reason just in this specific case of why. If you put an Allison in the truck, the transmission is controlled completely different. And it needs like very calculated power. Otherwise, the transmission will not run, will not shift correctly. Um, there's a very huge gap getting up to 500 horsepower of trying to control that transmission. Uh, secondly, you can't make that kind of power on, uh, a stock style platform reliably and usably, especially if you're going to put that much money into it, you've got to go T4 if that's actually what you want. I assume really this is not what he wants. Um, there's just, there's too many problems here. I can't answer them all. 
but I'm going to end up calling this guy. Maybe I'll see if he'll let me record the phone calls. We work through it and we can add that to the podcast later. All right. Last one. We're almost out of time. I'm trying to keep this under 20 minutes. Um, this is from uh, Ryan. He said, Hey, I'm looking to buy a KC stage one turbo and I'm going to intercool my truck after I install it. So it must be an OBS. Uh, I already have your stage one injectors with custom tuning. I'm on stock fuel right now and I will upgrade that in the future. I was wondering how the turbo will spool uh, and will it be sluggish on stock fuel injectors on a 1997 7.3? All right, so he's basically saying I have um, stock fuel system, stage one injectors, uh, and an OBS, and I want to put a KC stage one on it. Will it be laggy? Nah, it's not going to be laggy. KC uh, stage one compared to like a bone stock OBS turbo, they're very similar in responsiveness, like they're a little bit less responsive. Um, and I, someday we'll, I'm working on, I'm working on some dyno videos that we're going to like, and they take a long time to like create and edit because they take a long time to create and, and then putting all the details later together is kind of hard, uh, to, to be very accurate. And I'm not willing to just throw things out there willy nilly like that. But to answer this question, the, the turbo run great it really has nothing to do with the stock fuel system other than like ultimate power you're going to be able to make is going to be limited by the fuel system because you can't make power without fuel. So even though you have the injectors, you're going to be, you're going to be limited. Um, that's all the questions I am answering today. Um, I hope you guys have a fantastic Monday and we'll be back again tomorrow with, I don't know what, we'll figure that out tomorrow. Thanks guys.